Thanks for clicking on this video. In this little mini doc, we cover BG's early time on Cash Money, his fallout with Wayne and Birdman, signing to TI, and ultimately why he ended up in prison. Enjoy. BG started rapping when he was in middle school. He rapped for his barber, who liked what he heard, and put him onto his other clients, Brian and Ronald Williams, or as we know them, Birdman and Slim. At the time, BG was rapping under the alias Lil Doogie. Cash Money Records was damn near a brand new label at the time, and they liked what they heard from BG. So they added him to the Cash Money roster and made an agreement with BG's mother that they would look after him. BG went to high school at Abramson High School for a short period of time, but his priorities were elsewhere and he dropped out. Birdman and Slim would group BG up with another young rapper who was going by the name of Shrimp Daddy, or who you probably know as Lil Wayne. Together, they would be known as the Baby Gangsters and drop their collaboration album, True Story. Originally, this was viewed as a collab album, but it's now seen as a BG album since it only had three Wayne features. BG would also get involved in his first hip hop beef. At the time, Cash Money was beefing with another local label called Big Boy Records, so they dropped a track on the collab album called Big Boy, and would diss a rapper named Mystical. To keep things quick, let's just say that Cash Money made quick work of their rivals at Big Boy Records, and Big Boy Records became irrelevant by the mid-90s. However, this would set the stage for Cash Money's next rival, No Limit Records, as that would be the label Mystical joined next. Only unlike Big Boy, No Limit would see mainstream success and sign big acts like Snoop Dogg. Despite joining the Cash Money roster and putting out music, BG would still be involved in criminal activities. He was struggling with drug addiction as he started snorting dope at 15. BG would also be charged for juvenile possession of drugs and a firearm. He was found guilty and given probation, but he violated it and ended up serving two months in jail. Not long after he got out, he was caught with possession of 30 Valiums and 2 ounces of marijuana, and he ended up serving another 8 months. After serving his time, BG for the most part learned his lesson and promised himself that he would focus on music. During this time in the mid to late 90s, Wayne was somewhat out of the picture, and that would be the case for the next four years. In a very sad and unfortunate suicide attempt, Wayne shot himself. This resulted in the end of the group they had together, and that's when BG actually changed his name from Lil Doogie to BG, as he took the group's name and made it singular, meaning he would become Baby Gangsta, or BG for short. In 1996, BG released his next album, Choppa City, which was very well received in Cash Money's market, which at the time was primarily based in Louisiana and Texas. While Wayne was recovering, a lot of the early acts that Birdman and Slim signed didn't work out, leaving all the pressure on BG and DJ Manny Fresh to carry the label to new heights. They managed to pull it off. Together, they dropped two projects, It's All On You and It's All On You Volume 2, which both performed extremely well. After the success of the last two projects, Birdman and Slim made a move that would change the trajectory of Cash Money forever. They formed a group called the Hot Boys, which consisted of BG, Lil Wayne, who finally abandoned the Shrimp Daddy name, and new artists Turk and Juvenile. Cash Money would also sign a whopping $30 million distribution deal with Universal Records. You have to remember that up until this point, BG's life was fairly rough. He was a drug dealer, he lost his father at a young age, and he was battling drug addiction, but thanks to his talent and the fact that Cash Money was in a new position, BG was now able to make life-changing money. In 1999, BG would drop what many would see as his best album, Chopper City in the Ghetto. Thanks to that album, BG would be a part of two of Cash Money's early hits, Cash Money is an Army, and more importantly, Bling Bling which would peak at number 36 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1999. In terms of Bling Bling, you can probably imagine that the record is about jewelry. But did you know that BG was the one that made that phrase popular? The term even got added to the dictionary in 2003, thanks to BG. Now, so far in this story, it feels like everything's been smooth in terms of BG's business success. He was on a growing label and he was easily one of the hottest artists in the South, but things started to take a downward spiral. In 2000, BG would release his last album with Cash Money called Checkmate. While it sold well going gold in a month, it didn't compare to his previous project. Around this time, artists started getting vocal about their issues with Birdman 
and this included BG. Even though Birdman was doing a good job selling records and making these artists celebrities, there were concerns about how he was handling the financials. BG was pretty vocal about this. For example, when they went on the Cash Money Rough Riders tour, BG felt the payout seemed fishy. According to BG, they were selling out every show and Birdman was making $165,000 per show. The tour ended up grossing $14 million, and of that, BG only saw $300,000. Now I just want to say when it comes to the finances, this is BG's side of the story. Yes, the tour could have grossed 14 million, but we all know profit and revenue are two very different things. And we just don't have a breakdown of how the money was split to confirm who was right or wrong in this situation. Regardless, BG felt betrayed. You have to remember, once BG started popping, most of Cash Money's previous artists either passed away or fell out with Birdman. There was a lot of pressure on BG and DJ Manny Fresh to make hits and hold the label down. And BG did his job. He just felt like years later, Birdman wasn't holding down his end of the deal. I just need baby to know one thing. Baby. You know I love you like a father, you hear me? You know what I'm saying? I looked up to you. I went against my family for your time. You know what I'm saying? You turned your back on you know, man, real respect that you hear me god don't like ugly you always talking that god you know what i'm saying but man you'll be personal you know what i'm saying because you know the kind of relationship we had you hear me so just know one thing you know what i'm saying every dog had a day you hear me you gonna get your in a minute then i'm gonna make it where he ain't gonna be able to come back to the all baby straighten that shot with bg i love you man y'all got your names tattooed on each other yeah you, you you know how deep it is you can't tell me that you can't lay down at night and not think of BG. Straighten that business out with your brother, man. Get your brother straight. That's all I want to say. To, that's all I want to say to baby. Get BG straight, dog. You know, would, would Cash Money be universal without BG? Maybe, maybe not. But that was one of them brothers that helped you build your empire. You can't leave him back. BG was at somewhat of a crossroad. Yes, he could go start his own label, but Cash Money was on a strong run selling records and going on tour. They also did a good job leading him to stardom. The downside of staying with Cash Money was having to deal with what he saw as shady accounting on Birdman's end. Ultimately, BG ended up going with the former option, starting his own label, Chopper City Records. He also didn't anticipate Cash Money doing well once he left, as he felt he was the main attraction for the label and that the streets were going to side with him. He would also release his next album, Live in Legend, on his own label. Now, in the case of the other Hot Boys, Juvenile and Turk would also leave the label over financial concerns, but Lil Wayne actually stayed. And it, oh, it turned out yeah. to be real fucked up, but is it like some fucked up family shit? It's fucked up to the point right now, you know what I'm saying? Like I see, I got the streets behind me. Once I left Cash Money, the streets left Cash Money. You know what I'm saying? You know, the streets rooting for the underdog, and I'm the underdog, you know what I'm saying? They don't expect like me to shake back, you know what I'm saying? So... One thing about BG is no matter his label situation, he was consistent. While his next few albums didn't sell as well as the albums on Cash Money due to the fact that he didn't have as much of a push, they were still pretty well received. Over the next few years, he would release the albums Life After Cash Money and Heart of the Streets Volume 1 and 2. These are albums that many would argue are underground southern classics. Remember earlier in the story when I mentioned BG held down Cash Money in the late 90s? Well, this time, after BG left, Wayne would hold it down for cash money in the 2000s while BG released his music independently. You have to remember, BG had no issues with the other members. It was Birdman who dealt with his money at the end of the day. Lil Wayne put out a record called I Miss My Dogs off the Carter in 2004, which talked about how much Wayne missed all the old cash money members, and BG respected it. However, as time passed, Wayne would start doing interviews where he would take shots at BG, Juvenile, and Turk for leaving Cash Money. And of course, BG wasn't too happy with that. Y'all know just last year, they had this song out called I Miss My Dogs, you know what I'm saying? And that song right there meant so much to me, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that song there, like, really meant so much to me, you know what I'm saying? Because sure, they came from the hole with that song, you know what I'm saying? And, and I respected them for that, you know what I'm saying? But then recently, I picked up this magazine, and it was like, well, Lil Wayne, how you feel about everybody leaving cash money and you the only one on cash money? That nigga said, man, 
Everybody who left cash money, I don't respect none of them. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had to read it again. I had to read it again. I read the shit. It was like, how you feel that you still on cash money and everybody left cash money? You know what I'm saying? That nigga said, man, fuck everybody who left cash money. I don't respect none of them. You hear me? Now, I'm one of the niggas who left cash money. You know what I'm saying? So, I can see if he to say, well, you know, fuck you, man. I don't fuck with you because of this. Or, fresh left, I don't fuck with fresh because of this. Or, you know, PG, how you would have said, fuck everybody who left, I don't respect none of them, man. So if you say, fuck me, I ain't got no chairs but to say, fuck you back. You hear me? BG and Wayne's relationship was basically ruined at this point, and they would continue to diss each other on wax, which for you non hip hop heads means dissing each other lyrically on records. BG would also form a group called the Chopper City Boys, which consisted of himself, Hot Kizzle, Garn Snipe, as well as VL Mike. While the group did see some commercial success when they released their album We Got This in 2007, it wasn't necessarily comparable to the success of the Hot Boys. By the late 2000s, things were fairly steady for BG. While he wasn't a Billboard top charting rapper anymore, he was releasing projects through his own label and still getting booked for shows. At this point of the story in the late 2000s, you have to remember that when BG left 10 years prior, he thought cash and money wouldn't last. However, things went very differently and Lil Wayne was at the prime of his career at this point being arguably the biggest artist in the world. In 2009, there were talks of a hot boy reunion, and Cash Money also recently picked up their future stars Drake, Tyga, and Nicki Minaj. The reunion didn't end up happening, but BG and Turk did end up making an appearance at a Wayne concert. BG would also sign to TI's Grand Hustle Records for a short period of time, but it didn't end up working out. While things were somewhat smooth sailing over the past several years, BG's situation took a turn for the worse legally. Now here's how BG got into his current situation. On November 3rd, 2009, BG got into trouble with the law in New Orleans. He was driving his Chevy Tahoe when the police pulled him over for a routine traffic stop. When they searched his vehicle, they found three guns and two of them were reported as stolen. As a result, BG was taken to the New Orleans Parish Jail for carrying these guns illegally. On February 11th, 2010, BG appeared in court and said he wasn't guilty. The charges against him stated that he had a gun in August 2009 and again on November 3rd, 2009. The charges also said that BG and two people in the car with him tried to obstruct justice by having one of them sign a false statement taking blame for the guns. Before BG's trial, one of the passengers admitted guilt and was sentenced to 20 years in prison for his involvement, while the other pleaded guilty to a related charge and received a 30-month prison sentence. On December 7, 2011, BG confessed to having two guns and conspiring to obstruct justice. Then on July 18, 2012, he was given a 14-year prison sentence in a federal facility and was supposed to be under federal supervision for three years after his release. At federal court today, Christopher Dorsey, better known as local rapper BG, pled guilty today to gun charges. Dorsey admitted that on two occasions, including on this YouTube video, he possessed guns, despite being a three-time convicted felon. He also pled guilty to obstruction of justice for trying to get an associate to claim ownership of the guns. Dorsey will remain behind bars until his sentencing in March. Now, in terms of the last pieces of music we got from BG, in 2010, BG would release the album Hood to Be Hollywood, where he would reunite with Manny Fresh on a record called My Hood. He would also drop a collab mixtape with Lil Boosie called 22504. He dropped his final album, Holly Hood, as well as a mixtape called Money Side Murder Side with another group he made called Choppa City Gorilla Gang. When BG went to prison in 2012, his career became silenced for obvious reasons. Obviously, he couldn't do much from prison, and unlike Bobby Shmurda, who was at the top of his career when he got locked up, things had been slowing down for BG by the time he was incarcerated. The good news around this time was the word around the street was that BG was targeting cash money again, and he was on good terms with Birdman. At the end of 2022, it was rumored that BG would be released from prison in a couple weeks. Reaction to that rumor showed that hip-hop was still interested in BG, so much so that Gucci Mane offered BG a million dollar deal to sign to 1017. However, BG wouldn't end up being released for another year, and it was confirmed that he signed to cash money. Now on September 5th, 2023, BG was released from prison after more than a decade. 
Birdman would be seen greeting BG upon his release on Instagram Live, and hip hop as a whole was very happy to see him back. BG, who is now 43 years old as of the making of this video, has had a long journey in hip hop, and it's exciting to see what the future holds. Are you excited to see BG free from prison? Let us know in the comments. It's your boy DJ T Stomp, and I'm out. Peace.